so can we can we pick a couple of holes in this because I think this is fun. Please, oh yeah. So, well, I know you're gonna have all the answers, Bracken. This is scientific. Uh, we we got to go well, through the process. Wait, so oh. I'm sure, Rich, you have your line of questioning, but oh, there, you, all right. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> now he has the answers. Mm -hmm. Um, so okay, so then what we run into here, so we've decided that the five K is the objective measure, right? Like we're just gonna use that. I think that's fair. But then we have, okay, how do we, then the other side of the coin is then translating results on course mm. from hybrid racing to flat racing to mountain racing, and which you can't really translate a 5K time trial to, but because you can't yet, like where are we, how are we going to dissect the other side of the coin now? Mm. What's the other number, right? We have Correct. one number. What's the yeah. other one? What do we do with that? I think the the simplest, the lowest common denominator is flat to flat. When you hit a flat section, what pace are you running? When you come off a wall and you got a quarter mile flat run till the next one, what pace are you hitting? When you drop the bucket, mm -hmm. what pace do you get into? And I think there is some need in there, Jack, for a what we would call the turbo leg. When you start spooling up a turbo, it takes a little bit to kick in. It's not a supercharger where the energy is available when you step on the gas. There's some turbo leg on that. So there, what is your mod leg? Like if you if you have a 0 0.90 mod, you're running at 90% of your 5K. That's what you're you're getting to. But how long does it take you to get there? I think that has to factor into the equation as well. But simple simple terms are flat ground to flat ground, which then then you start running into the same issue that power meters with running run into, which is not all flat ground is equal. Mm -hmm. And what really is flat is, is flat for us 2% incline. And how does that decay our speed and flat mud versus flat cornfield versus flat gravel versus flat Texas grass versus Florida. It's all different. So there's always going to be a bit, there's going to be a plus minus in there. You're going to know that there is a standard error range built in but kirk i think that's the that's a really good question that we have to start with is what where do you even look to choose what your mod comparison is so are we basically <clears throat> ignoring atkins and emma and vj people who get off an obstacle and just they're right up to speed within four steps we're saying maybe 10 seconds after an obstacle or that that's when you get up but if, no, if it takes you that long you might not actually be as good of a compromised runner <laughs> Yeah, I think there is a mod score, which is probably your average across your flats. And then there is something, and, and I, I pose this to the panel, another score for your turbo leg. How long does it take you to spool up before you're there? This is hmm. going to get complicated. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I'm just like, I don't really <laughs> want to run the numbers anymore. What yeah, we do is we go back to the running public burpee 10K. And we start dissecting Rich Ryan splits, Mark Godet splits. We could get a percentage behind pace on average. We could project that out to others. Hmm. We could we have a testing period. Could I'll we, say this. Yeah. The numbers would say it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get up there. Because if you get right to 520 pace or you start at 540 and get to five flat before spooling down, it's a zero sum game. You know, you're coming out to the same thing anyways. They are going to be the same. Where in the middle of a race, there is a push and pull, the exchange of energy. Your morale is going to drop if you're getting gapped right off the obstacle. But in theory, if you stay on it mentally, your strategy does not affect mod. If you build into it or get right to it, it doesn't affect your average pace. And I think that might be important if we want to keep mod a standalone creature. I, I think we actually have a pretty good data set without even realizing it. DECA and High Rocks, we've got essentially flat 500 or 1,000 meter loops that are you do 10 times in a race and you can kind of, you add them up, you get an 8K or a 5K and that's pretty consistent. Yeah, and that was something I wanted to talk about. Like, is there a different score? Is there a hybrid mod versus an OCR mod? Because like the demands are going to be a little bit different, and a lot of it's going to be kind of terrain yeah. based. Um, if you add it up, though, like getting off the air bike versus doing some sit ups, you're going to feel different heading into that next run. But if you take the whole all all ten legs of it, that's where kind of things average themselves out. So I like the idea of the flat to flat. 
but it does make for complications in terms of like how to decide, like we're looking at Strava segments maybe then uh, and trying to see where that is. It, it, and, and Jack made this question for you. Is it better to have an average across a, an average time across like 10 different races before you can qualify for a mod score, like five, this maybe not 10, three to five so that we can have uh, some sort of cumulative idea as opposed to like what your flat was like. Um, and that, and that's another part with the flats. Like, is it in the beginning of the race or does it have to be at the back half of the race? Like where does the mod really kind of kick in? Yeah. D and, and do we kind of, if we were looking at Strava for, for someone during a race, like at slow, you can kind of eliminate the last couple miles. Cause that's where the hills sort of started, but you've got a pretty good segment where it was flat for three, four miles or so. Then it's like, what do you do? Do you ignore when people are on obstacles? Anytime there's a big dip in your speed, you just assume that you're on a bucket carry or on an obstacle or something. Do you just eliminate that and only look at the three quarters of the race where you're not doing something? So, so it gets really tricky. Well, I don't think there's room for assumptions. Yeah. You have to overlay the course map onto your Strava data and, and analyze we ran here, here, here. These are our six data points and we choose it. And I am the believer that you do not get to count mile one. I don't, I think you have to throw that off. Even if it's a two and a half mile open stretch, you don't get to start counting mod until you've hit your first, uh, to use Connor McGregor's term, the gas tank dagger. No, those are daggers to your gas tank. And that's when you get to start seeing who mod is. You don't get to use just because it's OCR or compromised or hybrid racing. You don't get to score it until it becomes compromised. Here's the thing. This is great. In theory, I think that um, in future races, like today, I thought we were just going to sit here and bullshit and project, which I think we're probably going to end up doing, right? Like who has the best mod scores just off of like mm -hmm. theory maybe. But I think in the future, just, I would love to see on Strava, like mod segment one, mod segment two, mm. mod segment three, like all the open stretches are running. Once we get on some flat courses, be able to split that data up. What do you think? I support it. Would, that, and, would you and, be a proud father that way, Bracken, seeing that popping up? Oh my goodness. I mean, I think it's us, right? Just because I said maximum available under duress, that would have flown right by me had someone not said, was that you, Kirk, said that acronym is mod? Who was Rich. It? Who was Rich? It? Yeah. yeah, I was spelling like, I was like, this is hilarious. And Jack, I thought, <laughs> asked the question. Like, it, it, it was a team thing. Yeah. We've I been we've been talking. We, 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 we had, I think from the first episode, we were like, we need to figure out a term. And then we figured it out together. Yep. So. I feel like I'm the Winklevoss twins, and you guys are about to – to Zuckerberg me here because <laughs> yeah, I said it, but I didn't know what to do with it where I see wheels spinning. So one thing now talking about it, is this strictly a running uh, metric because we're talking about flat versus flat or does it like your ability to go in through in and out of the obstacles? Like we'll talk about VJ. He's probably going to have one of the best mod scores I'd imagine, but maybe not if it's just the running to running, but if you include like, the bucket carry and the monkey bars and just and make it the percentage is just going to be much different it'd be like mm. okay a good mod score is now 54 as opposed to 90 like it'd be impossible to get there do you know what, do you know what i mean like is do we want to include how it is in the obstacles or is it just a running metric well spartan's standardized so you you know you're going to hit the same thing every race i think it should be part of it no yeah, why not? If you include the obstacles, then you just take finish time and say, VJ and Ryan Atkins have the best mod. I, that's well, not necessarily. Well, maybe right? they do. Well, there are some fantastic should. compromised runners who are just not good at the other pieces. Sure. But they hit the but, ground and they fly. <clears throat> and you and I look at them and think, how are you such a good compromised runner, but you're actually not good at obstacles? But their their baseline 5K that we're comparing to is going to be faster than someone who's back of the pack, who's good for their ability level, but just not fast. I'm going to give you an example. And this doesn't reflect on what I just say about people being bad at obstacles, but uh, Forrest Bogue. Forrest Bogue's a really good compromised runner. But he hasn't yet had his breakthrough moment, but there are times where you watch him during a race and he is just flying after obstacles. They don't cost him much. But he is not a sub-16 5K guy. So he would have a fantastic mod score, but he wouldn't show up on the heavy carries. He wouldn't show up on a lot of these, these sections. His downhills aren't typically as strong. His 5K is not 
going to be top 15 in the field, but his compromised running is very high end. He, he keeps a high mod score. So someone like that wouldn't really abide by any of these theoretical rules that we have. I think the only way we can look at it is flat to flat. Cause if you count the bucket, now you're, you're talking skill, the skill of doing a bucket should not impact how we consider mod. The mod, the mod sc scores your under duress. The bucket is the duress. But you're still moving under under the duress, I guess. Kirk, Kirk, where's your where are you falling on this with like running metric alone, or entire obstacle me, obstacle racing metric against your running? I think you should have both. I think you can easily do the entire lump sum of a flat ish race. And then I think you could have like, you know, there's different systems for everything. I think you could dissect it some total race. And then you could also do like mod segments one, two, and three, and just dissect the running. I bet you they're going to line up pretty close. I'd almost guarantee it, but I think you could do both. It'd be easy to do the first one. You just take the end result of the race and you compare it to their 5k time, average the pace out and here you go. So I think we could test them both out. What do you think? We're not, there's no rules yet. Not yet. Right, Jack? I agree. We're, we're, we're hypothesizing at this point. Yeah. I, I think this is an obstacle race, so we need to include obstacles. I, I think that it, it would be kind of cool to be able to, because no one's going to, very few people are going to have a, a way of doing a 5K time trial at 5% and then redoing it at 10%, like non-treadmill included. You, most people just don't have the terrain for something like that. But we might be able to find like the average grade of this course was blank percent. And now we have a ratio of what their flat is versus their finishing time here. And then we can kind of calibrate it a little bit. I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but I think that there would be ways to kind of compare hilly courses versus flat courses just based on like, oh, for every thousand feet that you guys climb, now you just multiply your score by 1.2 or something like Like we come up with a number like that. Yeah, we would, not you. We, well, yeah. I think, I think yeah. we're confusing mod with obstacle potential or obstacle of course racing ability mod is not sports specific mod mm -hmm. is how fast do i run when i'm fatigued from the external demands of a sport so triathletes could have a mod how their marathon that they finish their ironman is compared to what they can do a 5k or a regular marathon what you're talking about is what do my running metrics what do they predict I could do in OCR versus what I actually do? And that is, that's, that's not really a, a percentage of anything. That's just saying I'm a 1450 guy and I took fifth in the race. We're I, trying to make this a test basically. 